Whether you slurp them down <laughs> or scoop them up, oysters are an important part of the heritage and economy of the Chesapeake region. As far as I can remember, this area has always been known for oyster harvest. You had shucking houses in all the small towns, and they supported the communities through jobs and through income, and it gave the watermen a way of life. Watermen like Stuart Dawson of Dorchester County. I started working in 1984 on the water. I've hand toned for oysters, I've dove for oysters, power dredged for oysters. But times have changed. Centuries of over-harvesting, disease, and habitat loss have depleted the Bay's oyster population to less than 1% of what it once was. Mother Nature can't keep up. So these days, instead of fishing for oysters, Stewart is farming them with a little help from the Horn Point Lab Oyster Hatchery in Cambridge. So that it can easily move the larvae throughout the tank. Part of the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science, Horn Point is dedicated to putting oysters back into the bay, in part by providing newbie farmers with free oyster larvae and training on how to turn these tiny specks into full-grown oysters ready for the raw bar. So right now we're at the Horn Point Oyster Hatchery and we're adding larvae to a setting tank, which will then be planted onto a lease. Meaning an oyster farm in the bay. And in a couple of years, they'll go ahead and harvest. Horn Point has been supporting the state's growing aquaculture industry for more than 30 years. But the value of these oysters to be isn't just economic, it's also ecological. Oysters are the filter feeders of the bay. So they filter the bay, clean it up, remove sediment from the water column. While the oysters are overboard, they're still doing their oystery things, which is fantastic, but they're also taking the pressure off the wild harvest. Stephanie Alexander is Horn Point's hatchery manager, meaning that she oversees the production of oyster larvae, like the ones going into Stewart's setting tank, a process that begins here. So this is our conditioning lab. These oysters we got from the Pump Tank River, and they are just getting ready to have their babies. In the wild, Chesapeake oysters only reproduce or spawn during the summer months, and only when conditions are just so. But here in the lab, hatchery workers can control everything from water temperature to salinity, giving them a much longer window. When it's time to spawn, the oysters are submerged in warm water, and before long, Males release sperm from the side of their shell in long, continuous streams. Females typically clap every 30 seconds or so for about a half hour, 45 minutes. During that time frame, they can produce anywhere from 2 million to 100 million eggs. Next, the oysters are separated by sex, and the eggs are collected, counted, and fertilized with the sperm. Then we will put them in our big swimming tanks and grow them for about two to three weeks. And voila, larva, ready to be set on shell and deployed into local waterways. In the past two years, we've put about 1.78 billion spat back into the Chesapeake Bay. Some onto oyster farms like Stewart's. As for the rest, they're bound not for the raw bar, but for the sanctuary bar. After being loaded up onto the deck of the Robert Lee, a converted oyster barge captained by lifelong waterman Doug West, they're transported to a protected area where harvesting is a no-go and dumped overboard. But in the long run, even this spat is beneficial to the state's oyster economy. Any spat that we put into the bay eventually is gonna spawn. That's the best part of a sanctuary, is that it's a reproducing population of oysters that hopefully will help regenerate oysters for everybody. From the waterman to the oyster farmer to the oyster enthusiast. We've had decades and centuries of demise, and now we're trying to get them to come back. And it's not a quick solution. It's going to take a long-term effort to bring the oyster back to the bay.